All right, so peace. So now this is going to be another volume on the uh, responding to your comments. This is on the Steph Curry video uh, in regards to him supposedly being hated because he was like, quote unquote, light skin. But now let's see through some of these comments and see if there's how much is uh, I'm going to respond to. Let me see. Says Steph Curry has become the American white boy of the league. That's why he gets no respect from most black people. Uh, that seemed like a pretty, seemed like a uh, a pretty overarching comment. I don't know if you qualify to speak for most so-called black people. I don't know if uh, if Steph Curry has become the so-called white boy of the league. I think I, I think I understand what you're trying to get at, but I just don't see that with uh with Curry. I do think that um that uh you know his image has something to do with his marketability, but I mean let's keep in mind the most marketable athlete of all time was not just a so-called black man, he was a so-called dark-skinned black man that being Michael Jordan. All right, so sometimes sometimes the light-skinned dark-skinned thing is, is low-hanging fruit. All right, so let's see here. Does he so arrogant uh, on the refs game? This guy's just bitching. Let's see. Steph should have never won MVP. This league is watered down and caters to Steph's ability to shoot. If Steph played in Isaiah's era, he would be a utility player at best. And that's what the that's what the players are saying. All three of those players will still be high caliber stars no matter what era. Well, Steph is being a beneficiary of the new soft high scoring three point. Fast break NBA. I just sound like you're regurgitating stuff, man. You know, Curry's great for what he does. He's great at what he does. And, uh, you know, just leave it at that. I don't know, understand how he how he never should have won the uh, the MVP when he had one of the most dominant years last year of any player ever. You know, let me also say this. The defense in the 80s was overrated, all right? I watched a little bit of NBA in the late 80s. I didn't really start watching until about 1990. But um, the defense around that era was a little overrated. All right. There was a lot of, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of, 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 of Matador defense in the league in that time. All right. So that's basically that. Let me see. I see. Uh, this this brother, he looks like one of the um, he looks like a so-called pro-black dude. Let's see here. I notice you deny so-called black culture a lot. I've witnessed that before from so-called pro-blacks. Not calling you one. Culture is simply a collection of human expression. So-called blacks do have culture. It may not be the right one, or most desirable one, or the most appropriate one in your and other so-called blacks' perspective. But there is culture nonetheless. Anytime you get a group of people together in a close environment, culture will arise. Culture is growth from the relationships that we form with another. Well, bro, by your by your definition of culture, which is your right, then you know, then the cats in jail have a culture. All right. That's you know, I'm that's when I say culture, that's not the context in which I say it. When I say culture, I mean an, an understanding of, of customs, an understanding of lineage, a understanding of, of family unit, an understanding of spiritual aspect, of deity uh, relationship, uh, of truthful and right history. That's what I'm referencing. I'm not referencing what you're talking about. Okay? I'm not referencing what you're talking about. You're, you seem to be another dude trying to make... Uh, trying to turn prison into a palace. Good luck with that. All right? Good luck with that. A lot of you cats that try to fabricate these different meanings, y'all end up just being really bitter because you don't know how to humble yourself to the reality of the situation. All right? When, as long as you guys try to maintain these delusions about what you are and where you're at, you're always going to be bitter and miserable, you know, which I find with a lot of so-called blacks Especially so-called pro-blacks. Uh, he's trying to call me a so-called pro-black. I don't, I don't know where he's getting that from. Uh, but uh, you know, 
it is what it is, right? He said, I'm not trying to call you one, but then his, his subsequent sentence says, it may not be the right one or most desirable one or the most appropriate one in your and other so-called blacks perspective, but there is culture nonetheless. Anytime you get a group of people together in a close environment, culture will arise. Culture is growth from the relationships that we form with another. The language, ebonic, street slang, <laughs> music, art, the ways of expression, movement, dress, cooking, hair, all of that is culture. Even the way we think is dictated by culture. I disagree vehemently with the notion that a people can exist in a community without a culture. Well, I agree. They cannot exist in a community without a culture because there's no such thing as black culture or black community. Because black is a color, it's not a race, dude. And no disrespect, I say this all the time to cats. If you can't grasp that, this is not the channel for you. All right? If you cannot grasp that, this is not the channel for you. Because the only thing that's going to happen, and I'm going to let you know this, the only thing that's going to happen to cats like you who keep coming on my channel, and people a lot of times, they... They claim to disagree with the sentiment of my channel, but they keep coming back. You know why? Because the truth is like a fire. Right? It's like a fire. It's going to attract you and it's going to repel you at the same time. Okay? If you're not somebody of the truth, you're going to be frustratingly drawn to the content on this channel because it's going to be based strictly in truth. If you're somebody of truth, you're going to be drawn to the channel because you're going to be drawn to the truth. All right. You go ahead and you tell me what so-called black culture is and so-called black community. Good luck with that, bro. Good luck with it. You go ahead and do what a lot of so-called pro blacks like to do, which is make up shit on the fly. OK, talking about Ebonics and all this other stuff. Good luck with that. I wish you I wish you the best of luck. I know I know how things are going to end. No disrespect. I know how things are going to end for you because I just know where that goes. It's like when you're dealing with an atheist, right? Atheists almost always have uh, depression issues because they're trying to explain everything on their own. They don't want to humble themselves before a higher power. So they try. They think that they can explain everything. They think that they can deal with every issue that comes up in their life without any type of spiritual help. And they end up bugged out normally on drugs or alcohol. All right? But uh, the culture that you're talking about, bro, you know where that culture has you? At the very, very bottom of the barrel. So good luck. Uh, good luck trying to exemplify that culture. Good luck trying to exalt that culture. Good luck with that. Let's see. It says, could it be that Steph is receiving a lot of praise because he won a championship faster than LeBron Westbrook or Chris Paul? Uh, I don't know. I, I just think that he has a he has a King David quality about him. You know, you read the scriptures. King David was a man who uh, he did not have the outside appearance of a great warrior, but, you know, he was able to conquer. Let me see. Let's see here. I don't know how you watch this trash, though. The reason why I watch a lot of these these programs, bro, is because it gives me fodder to correct. You understand? That's why I watch it. I like to watch the mainstream news to uh, decipher what they're actually saying. A lot of people act like they already know everything that's going on. And, oh, I don't know why you watch this and watch that. And a lot of times they don't know what the hell's going on. Let me see here. Tyler Donnelly said, boo, you suck. Oh, that's good. That means I have something in common with your mom. Let's see. DNA has proven all blacks in U.S. have white in them. Uh, the brother Prince Tro responded the opposite. Exactly. Uh, the white man likes to continue on with this notion about how... Uh, how, uh, you know, he wants you to think that he's the seed line for everybody, particularly so-called blacks, because he likes to see the confusion in blacks. That goes back to the to the comment response I had for Mr. Corey Green. All right. When you call yourself black and you keep talking about black culture, that that what, what you're doing is you're directly linking your fate and your history to the so-called white man, because you can't have black without white. You can't have white without black. All right. 
That's why, and a lot of times, so-called blacks get frustrated by this, and I've seen this since I was young. And when I was young, uh, I didn't understand this as well as I do now. A lot of times, you'll have people who are very dark and so-called Negroid from other places, like the Dominican Republic or Haiti or other places, and they'll be asked, are you black? And they'll say, I'm not black, I'm Dominican, or I'm not black, I'm Haitian, I'm not black, I'm Brazilian. I'm not black. I'm from Ghana. And so-called blacks from America will get upset and they'll say, oh, you just don't want to be black. No, it's that they have a culture, dude. You don't have a culture. Your color is not a culture, man. Your color is not a culture. And a lot of times y'all get mad at that, but it's just the truth. Everybody knows that except for you. (laughs) Let's see here. Uh, this cat JD, he said, good info, but I must say throughout the continent of Africa, you can tell he's one of these Africa, he's one of these Afrocentric dudes. He's spelling Africa with a K. He said, throughout the continent of Africa, my phenotype, and I'm sure yours, is in abundance out there. We traveled the world in ancient times, but where did we originate from, bro? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a very wise man, and he emphasized culture for us so-called black men and women. He also made it clear that names like Douglas and Williams are slave names, hence the X and what it symbolizes. Where can I read up on the information that we so-called blacks of captivity had royalty in Ireland, England, and other parts of of Europe? I am not disputing what you say, just questioning your info. Thanks. Well, bro, I'm going to go through your comments sentence by sentence. All right. You say, good info, but I must say throughout the continent of Africa, my phenotype, and I'm sure yours is in abundance out there. Well, uh, brother, that's possible. But I can also say that you can probably go to Fiji and uh, uh, Vanuatu, right? V as in Victor, A, N as in Nancy, U, A, T, U. You could probably go to parts of India and, uh, you know, South America, and you could find our so-called phenotypes there as well. Okay. The so-called black man has been taught by the so-called white man that he's from he's from so-called Africa just because he has dark skin. That's not the case. All right. A lot of what the so-called white man teaches is based off of the pretense of the scriptures that everybody that's so-called black is is a descendant of Ham. Everybody that's so-called white is a descendant of Japheth and everybody else is, is a descendant of Shem. And that's not the truth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth were all so-called black men. Okay? They were all so-called black men. But that's neither here nor there. Um, just because somebody looks a certain way doesn't mean that, that you're from their lineage. And, I'm, and I've made this statement before. If you had a, Arabic man stand, a so-called Arabic man stand next to a so-called Indian man, they both would look similar, if not the same. But they, don't, they know that they're not the same. You know why? Because they each have a culture. If you had a so-called Japanese man stand next to a so-called Chinese man, stand next to a so-called Korean man, and stand next to a so-called Vietnamese man, uh, you could tell them, all oh, you guys all look the same, so you're all the same. They would, vir- they would virulently disagree with you and vehemently disagree with you. You know why? Because they have a culture. Once again, by you guys' statements, a lot of you so-called pro-black brothers, you show that you have no culture because you're always trying to group yourselves together with people based on your skin color. You understand what I'm saying? So that's like a, uh, that's like a lost puppy dog. You know how a lost puppy will follow anybody home? That's how a lot of you brothers are. Because y'all don't have an understanding of your culture, you're always trying to piggyback off of somebody. You're always trying to force somebody to accept you because y'all have the so-called same skin color. Allegedly. Anyway, let's see. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a very wise man and he emphasized culture for us so-called black men and women. Well, that's an interesting statement, bro. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you mean the man who learned his doctrine from a a so-called white boy named uh, Farad Muhammad. That's the guy you're talking about? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the guy who learned his doctrine from a a so-called Caucasian named... I believe Wallace Fard Muhammad, right? A guy who uh, they claim just disappeared in the thin air 
and all of a sudden Elijah Muhammad became the leader of the so-called nation of Islam. Hmm. Okay, if you say so, bruh. No, no, I'm not. Look, I'm not trying to disrespect your sentiment. It's just amazing to me some of the things that brother said. Y'all said he was a very wise man. Everything, everything of wisdom that he cited came out the Bible. So he emphasized culture for us. What culture was he was he emphasizing when he was teaching people to worship a, a rock out there in Mecca? The Bible tells you not to worship stones, but he's telling people to worship a damn rock out there in Mecca. All right. For us so-called black men and women, he also made it clear that names like Douglas and Williams are slave names. Well, no disrespect, he was wrong. All right. Elijah Muhammad was wrong. Douglas and Williams are not slave names. The name Douglas means black man, so-called black man. OK. The name Williams is a uh, is a name that's highly indicative of so-called black men. It's a Welsh name. All right. I may even post a little information on that. But he says that he also made it clear that names like Douglas and Williams are slave names, hence the X and what it symbolizes. The term X means unknown. OK, that's what the, that's what the, the term X means. It means unknown. It's a mathematical or an arithmetic uh, uh, terminology known as a variable. But the term X comes from Osiris, bro. All right. That's why the term X means unknown. Another term for, from, for Osiris was Amun-Ra, meaning the hidden God or the unknown God. Okay? That's why Osiris was always depicted with his, with his hands in an X across his chest. Okay? It symbolized the, the so-called unknown God. All right? Just to let you know, that term X is from Osiris. Let's see here. Where can I read up on the information that we that we so-called blacks of captivity had royalty in Ireland, England and other parts of Europe? I'm not disputing what you say, just questioning your info. Thanks, brother. We're in the age of information right now. You know, you brothers have to do a lot of the, a lot of that research. OK, but let me say this. I'm going to be doing a series on that very soon. But you brothers have to do research on that. You brothers have to look it, have to look things up, verify information, and see if you're willing to accept it. If you, you know, a lot of y'all don't know what you want to believe. Okay, but there's books out there on the Black Douglases. Uh, there's books out there on 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 numerous aspects of things that I've stated about the so-called Black rulership of Europe. Uh, they already know that we rule Europe. The so-called elite Caucasians. They already know that we rule Europe. A lot of so-called black scholars know that we rule Europe. Some of them, are, some of them are getting paid to push the African angle because that's part of the slave narrative, right? They really want you to believe that they took tens of millions of people off of one small section of the west coast of Africa, and y'all believe that, right? Y'all really believe that. Now, don't get don't get it twisted. There were black so-called blacks that were brought here from the west coast of Africa, but it was in the thousands. It wasn't in the millions. It was more like, you know, in the in the uh, uh, maybe in the into the tens of thousands. It wasn't into the millions. All right. And a lot of the blacks that were sent here were a lot, some a lot of the so-called blacks that were deported from uh, Spain and Portugal when they kicked a lot of the Muslim blacks and the so and the Old Testament uh, Hebrew blacks out of uh, Spain and Portugal in the late 1400s. And they kicked them out to the Spanish holdings on the west coast of Africa to be deported here to the Americas. All right. But yeah, I'll be doing a um, a series on the so-called black rulership in Europe very soon. Let's see here. Let's see, I, I feel your brother because I made a lot of bad decisions in my life and seeing close friends killed. My friends hate that I like and watch soccer. It's all a mindset. Uh, well, brother, you know what? Just be thankful that you're still still alive and here to try to continue to correct your life. Life is just a journey, man. You know, that's all it is. When we pass away, we just transition back to the you know back to the spirit world, back to the atmosphere to await our judgment. 
So as long as you're alive and breathing, you still have a chance to get better. That's how we got to look at it. So, you know, God bless you and, you know, may he be with you in your journey. Let's see here. Let's see. This brother can't make a sports-related video without disrespecting that man and never speaks on the good he's done off the court. Bro, this is not a fan channel. All right? If you're looking for a fan channel of somebody, then you have to go to another channel. There's plenty of channels with fanboys talking about how much they love LeBron James. All right, brother? I made this, I made this channel to bring out information that you normally can't get anywhere else. That's why I made this channel. I didn't make this channel to promote fanboyism. Okay? That's it. I didn't say anything bad about LeBron James. All I did was speak the truth. His mother slept with them, a couple of his teammates. Damn, they drove the man crazy, drove him off the team. That's what happened. All right? It is what it is. Let me see. Everybody hates Angel. Here we go with the bullshit. Respect Chronicles. There's a YouTuber that goes by Everybody Hates Angel. His vids might interest you. Check it out and let me know. I don't, uh, maybe I'll check him out, brother. Let me see here. I appreciate your knowledge on the history of our, of our English lineage. I checked my last name, which is Monger. My last name was of Welsh lineage. I was totally shocked. You got to do a history lesson on the Black Plague. There's limited resources on what truly happened around this time period. Thanks. Yeah, brother, I will as soon as possible. You must have to understand something about the black, so-called Black Plague. Um, uh, history is about narrative. It's not about truth. I've stated this in the past. Okay? It's about narrative. It's not about truth. Uh, they don't want you to know that so-called blacks ruled in Europe for over a thousand years over the so-called Caucasian. Okay, that would have a massive effect on the overall psychological outlook of both nations of people. It will cause all types of turmoil and upheaval. A lot of blacks have invested a lot of mental energy in the victimization role. Right. White people owe us this. White people owe us that. Uh, they had us in slavery for 400 years and so-called blacks have invested a lot of energy into that into that victim mentality all right and so-called whites have been taught for years for most of their whole life that they were always rulers and that they've civilized the entire world and yada 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 they've been taught these things all right so this, this type of information about blacks ruling for the in the middle ages that type of stuff they can't let that stuff out all right they just can't i mean you taking it you look look you look at it for example you look at the bible and it's always funny. People always say the Bible is the white man's book. The Bible states explicitly that the ancient Egyptians were of the descendants of Ham. The Caucasian man says that so-called black people come from Ham. That's what he says, right? But then he'll make movies showing ancient Egyptians as Caucasian. You understand that? That's what he does. This is after he's already said that he believes in the Bible. And the Bible explicitly says that the Caucasians, I mean, pardon me, that the uh Ancient Egyptians were these sons of Ham. But he'll make a movie showing the ancient Egyptians as Caucasian. Why is that? Because the ancient Egyptians had a culture that he venerates, that he worships, that he predicates his own society off of. Anything of value, he's going to try to make Caucasian because it has a great psychological effect, not only on him, on, on himself and his progeny and his and his uh how he views himself, it also has an effect on every other race. All right. But yes, most of you so-called black people have Welsh last names. Uh, the Welsh was, were people of color, so-called the original Welsh, all right? So-called black people. Same thing with the British, Irish, so-called Scottish, uh, so-called Germans, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, etc. All right? Italians, Spanish, Portuguese, so on and so forth. But, you know, I'll, I'll do a video on that later. So-called Black Plague, that was a, a disease that was brought by the so-called white man out of the caves of Europe. Uh, out of the caves of uh, Central Asia, I should, I should say. As they pushed westward, they brought that disease with them. 
That's why it came about around the time of the Renaissance. All right. They call it the black play because it affected mostly blacks. All right. You will not see you. You will not see uh, any real information stating the truth about the so-called black plague. They'll claim that rats brought it. The disease moved way too fast for it to have been brought by rats. All right. So that's that. That's stuff that that's just bullshit that they made up. Let me see. Let's see here. Judah, what you said about dreams and misery loves company is exactly what I'm going through, man. Almost broke me down. Great video. Brother, don't let anybody break you down from following your dream. I'm telling you, they will try to do it. All right? As long as what you, as long as what you want to do is not hurting anybody else, you go ahead and pursue your dream. All right? Most people don't have the courage to follow what they want to do with their life. Most people conform because most people are followers. Most people feel the pressure to want to fit into the conventions of society. That's why if you ever are in a corporate America workplace, there's 99% zombies there. All right? Most people don't know what they really think. They don't know what they really feel. That's why most people in this society are massively depressed. Okay? That's why the prescription drug industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. They like having the people depressed. All right? Everybody's trying to fit in. Most people don't have courage. All right? Once you figure out what you want to be in life, then that's a curse. A lot of people are here on the earth and don't know what they're here for. That's a curse. All right? If you know what you're here for, then you go and you pursue it. And don't let anybody take that shit away from you, man. That's all you have is, is your vision for yourself. All right? But, yeah, I'll end the video with that. All right, peace. All right, so, you know, based off of some of the questions that I answered in the last video in regards to the last names, I'm going to add this little section here at the end of the video just to, um, just to verify, validate some of the statements that I've made about the last names from the British Isles. All right, this is an article from TheGuardian.com. Uh, it's going to read semantic enigmas. Why do so many African-Americans, so-called African-Americans, have Welsh names? Venus Williams, Colin Powell, Floyd Patterson. Common thought relates the names to slave owners. But there were very few Welsh slave owners in the American South. Most Welsh immigrants to the U.S. ended up in the steel and coal industry in the North. Now, let's see what they say. Uh, you're going to have a series of Caucasians try to answer this question. And they're all going to flop because they've been taught the slave narrative and they're going to do whatever they can to try to maintain the slave narrative. So let's see what they said. Uh, Given that seaports in South Wales were great shipping centers and handled much of the triangular trade, it is possible that slaves taken from Africa were named after sea captains or crew on the ships that transported them to America or the names of the people who owned the vessels. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, in the slave narrative, in, in the slave, and this is how ridiculous a lot of these Caucasians are because they're so desperate to protect the slave narrative. And I'm going to hit you with some. A lot of you, you so-called black people are desperate to protect the slave narrative too because it makes you feel close to the so-called white man. Right. But in this on this guy's planet, uh, quote unquote, slaves were taken from Africa. They were named after sea captains or crew on the ships. And they kept those names and remembered those names on the on the voyage over to America. And they and they said to the to their new masters, my name is after the sea captain of the damn ship. This is how ridiculous these people are. Let's go to the next one. In the Philadelphia region. There was a very large Welsh community that settled the area, and that legacy lives on in places such as Bala Sinwid and, and Shulkill. The towns that bear these old Welsh names are also the richest parts of the area to this day and money. 
not geographic location was the only qualification for slave ownership. It appears that the questioner is mistakenly under the impression that slavery was always limited to the agricultural South. I am sure that many of the names have thus originated from this area. So now this guy is trying to say that <laughs> tens of millions of so-called black people have Welsh last names because of an area, uh, a Welsh area in the Philadelphia region. All right, are you guys starting to understand how desperate and how stupid people become? When they're trying to maintain a narrative, it's like somebody who's trying to prove that Santa Claus exists. All right, let's move on. Two qualifications to the previous posters. Williams and Patterson are not exclusively Welsh names. Patterson is a fairly common Scottish name. You know why? Because the original Scottish were black. A large portion of African-Americans have Scottish names. You see, even this woman notices it. See that? A large portion of African Americans have Scottish names, due partly to the fact that many Scots emigrated or were exiled, deported to the Carolinas after the 1745 uprising, and many of those who survived became slave owners a generation or so later and gave their names to their slaves. So now, this person is trying to make you believe that uh, the Scots, the Scottish who came over here, and I'm gonna hit you with some. Many of the Scottish who came in from Scotland were uh, black Scots. All right, if you ever look up the origin of fried chicken, it tells you that that fried chicken came from Scotland. All right, and that's because a lot of the so-called people who came from Scotland was, were so-called black. All right, but this woman wants you to believe that white Scottish people came over here and bought up a lot of the slaves, so-called black slaves. All right. Incidentally, in doing so, they were merely passing on the Highland Scottish custom by which all the members of a clan took their surname from the clan chief, whether or, whether or not they could trace any blood relation. Colin Powell was born in the U.S., but his parents came from the Caribbean, I believe Jamaica, to the U.S. Uh, Schulkill is not Welsh at all, but Dutch. Yeah, and, and let me say this, a lot of the original Dutch were black, all right, so-called black as are many place names in New York State and elsewhere in the Mid-Atlantic region. Once again, this does nothing to explain why tens of millions of so-called blacks, not just in the Americas, but in Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, have Welsh, Scottish, English, Dutch, German last names. Let me say this. Those of you who watch boxing, uh, guys like Marvin Hagler, Adrian Broner, uh, Bernard Hopkins, those names, uh, Hagler, Hopkins, Broner, those are all German last names. Okay? The original Germans were so-called black people. For those, of you, for those of you who don't know, they're the ones who settled in England. Okay? Anyway, let's continue on. Adam Guzman. The only thing the slave traders and owners did to the last names of many of their slaves was strip them of it. That's about it. So you see, Adam Guzman... Adam Guzman's the only one on here talking a little bit of sense. He said, the only thing the slave traders and owners did to the last names of many of their slaves was strip them of it. That's about it. May I make a suggestion here again? I don't think black people have the last names of slave owners. Doesn't make sense. Why would anyone want the last name of a family that caused them misery? Black people have the last names of heroes who were mostly Welsh and Norman. Right. The reason why so-called blacks have the last name of mostly Welsh and Norman was because most blacks have Welsh or Norman lineage. All right. The Normans who landed in England in 1066 A.D. under William the Conqueror, they were so-called black people. OK. Anyway, the Welsh were barely involved in slavery. See, Adam Guzman is the only one who's making a little sense. This is why I wanted to post this article, because a lot of you brothers and sisters need to read this to understand these so-called white people, they, they think about these things. They're trying to figure out how come all these so-called blacks have these Welsh last names. You know why? Because most of these so-called white people, like the ones that you see in this article, they're white trash. They're the recipients. They're the recipients of the fake historical narrative. They don't know that the original Welsh were so-called black. All right. But let's find another article. 
All right, so now this is an article on the Daily Mail called The Blackest Name in America. Why are 90% of Washington's African Americans? And this is something that I've mentioned in the past. It wouldn't surprise me if George Washington was actually a so-called black man. It wouldn't shock me at all. All right. I mean, he could have been a Caucasian. People think that because somebody was a slave owner, so-called slave owner, that that makes them Caucasian. You have many so-called black slave owners. All right. Not saying that George Washington was definitely a so-called black man. I'm just saying it wouldn't shock me. Right. Almost every other almost every person I met in my life, last name Washington was a so-called black man. All right. Because once again, those were so-called blacks that came here from England. But anyway, let's read this article written by a man named Jesse Washington, who's probably a so-called black man himself. It says George Washington's name is inseparable from America and not only from the nation's history. It identifies countless streets, buildings, mountains, bridges, monuments, cities and people in a puzzling twist. Most of these people are black. The 2000 U.S. Census counted 163,036 people with the surname Washington. 90% of them were African American, a far higher black percentage than for any other common name. Famous surname, New Yorker Shannon Washington, who says, Growing up, I just knew that only black people had my last name. Washington was listed 138th when the Census Bureau published a list of the 1,000 most common American surnames from the 2000 survey along with, et with ethnic data. The project was not repeated in 2010. Yeah, it probably wasn't repeated because they said, damn, we finding too many niggas with this name. Anyway, 90% of those Washingtons numbering 146,520 were black. Only 5% or 8,813 were white. 3% were two or more races. 1% were Hispanic. And 1% were Asian or Pacific Islander. No, they wasn't. Those were people who put down on the, <laughs> on the damn survey that they were Hispanic or Asian or Pacific Islander. But, you know, their father was either was most likely a so-called black man. And they just didn't want to claim it on the survey. Jefferson was the second blackest name at 75% African American. There were only 16,070 Lincolns. And that number was only 14% black. Jackson was 53% black. Williams was the 16th blackest name at 46%. But there were a, there were a million five hundred thirty-four thousand and forty-two total Williamses, including seven hundred and sixteen thousand seven hundred and four black ones. So there were more blacks named Williams than anything else. That's my point. When you say that, when you say that there was that out of their survey, out of their survey, that Williams was 46% black. You got to understand something. So-called blacks only represent, allegedly anyway, about 12% of the total population. All right? So these numbers are really skewed. All right? But anyway, just reading on. The name black was 68% was white, meaning there were far more white blacks than black black than black blacks. The name white, meanwhile, was 19% black. The story of how Washington became the blackest name begins with slavery and takes a sharp turn after the Civil War when all blacks were allowed the dignity of a surname. Uh, that's the narrative. Even before emancipation, many enslaved black people chose their own surnames to establish their identities or more likely, many so-called blacks already had their own last name because it was a family name that they carried with them over here from the British Isles. All right. Some historians theorize large numbers of blacks chose the name Washington in the process of asserting their freedom. Let's read that sentence again. Some historians theorize. Well, if you're if you're a historian, why would you theorize? You're not a historian. You're a fabricator. A historian tells you what happened. A historian don't tell you what they think or what they believe might have happened. All right. To maintain a narrative. But anyway. Today, there are black Washingtons like this writer who are often identified as African-American by people they have never met. This most likely is a fake portrait of George Washington. Wouldn't shock me at all. 
It says, President Washington, he had over 100 slaves, but he ordered that they all be freed on the death of his wife. Yeah, well, so-called blacks own slaves too. Please understand that. There are white Washingtons who are sometimes misidentified and have felt discrimination. There are Washingtons of both races who view the name as a special, if complicated, gift. And there remains the presence of George Washington, born 279 years ago on February 22nd, whose complex relationship with slavery echoes in the blackness of his name today. His great-grandfather John arrived in Virginia from England in 1656. George married the daughter of a wealthy man and eventually owned more than 5,000 acres. Along with land, he inherited 10 human beings from his father. He gained more through his marriage to a wealthy widow and purchased still more enslaved blacks to work the lands he aggressively amassed. But over the decades, as he recognized slavery's contradiction with the freedoms of the new nation, Washington grew opposed to human bondage. Washington was not a harsh slave owner by the standards of the time. He provided good food and medical care. He recognized marriages and refused to sell off individual family members. Later in life, he resolved not to purchase any more black people. Now, this a lot of this that's being written as narrative from the author. All right. A lot of this is written as narrative because this is another so-called black man who equates slavery with blacks and who and who equates the word slave with a so-called black person. All right. So just understand that this is uh, a very malaffected black person writing this article and, and he's he's pushing a narrative. But he also worked his slaves quite hard and under difficult conditions. As president, he shuttled them between his Philadelphia residence and Virginia estate to evade a law that freed any slave residing in Pennsylvania for six months. While in Philadelphia, uh, only judge Martha Washington's maid moved about the city and met many free blacks. Upon learning Martha was planning one day to give her to an ill-tempered granddaughter, judge disappeared. According to Ron Chandler's new biography, Washington, a life, the president abused his presidential powers and asked the Treasury Department to kidnap Judge from her new from her new life in New Hampshire. The plot was unsuccessful. Mr. Chernoff said Washington was leading his schizoid was leading the schizoid life in theory and on paper. He was opposed to slavery, but he was still zealously tracking and seeking to recover his slaves who escaped. Let's skip down this article because this article looks a little long. Let's see here. It says only a handful of George Washington's hundreds of slaves did, for example, and he recorded most as having just a first name. It says Mary Thompson, an historian at Mount Vernon, said it's a myth that most enslaved blacks bore the last name of their owner. You see that? I'm going to read it again. Mary Thompson, an historian at Mount Vernon, said it's a myth that most enslaved blacks bore the last name of their owner. Only a handful of George Washington's hundreds of slaves did, for example, and he recorded most as having just a first name. Got a picture of Denzel there. Let me see here. All right, you know, a lot of y'all, y'all can read this article for yourself. Um, I'll probably read it a little later on. It looks a little long, but uh, it just proves my point that a lot of these names, they make you think that these names come from slavery, and they really don't. Even though this article is still trying to push that narrative that because he doesn't really know where the names come from. But the point being, like I said, a lot of these uh, so-called black people, they brought these names over here with them. All right. All right. There's another page I found. Welsh surnames common among African-Americans. I was asked this morning why so many African-Americans have Welsh surnames. Quincy Jones, Jesse Owens, Venus Williams, Serena Williams. Was it due to slavery solely or was there other reasons? It seems Welsh names predominate in the Afro-American community. I found this link below, but it would be interesting to see if SSIWers can offer any insight. All right, this is a forum called Forum Say Something. Some say something in. 
Yes, of course, you're going to get the normal nonsense. Yes, in the U.S., many slaves took on their own a surname. Well, we just read that that was a myth. So he says, you also find a lot of Irish names among African-Americans. Why is that? Because the so-called original Irish were black. That's why. Let's see here. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's go. Let's click on the link that he provided, and see what what we find here. And this is just to show you once again, these Caucasians they get together and they talk about <laughs> they talk about you black people, man. All right, they want to know why you have their names because they've been the recipients of the slave narrative. All right, so why do Welsh names seem to be so common within the African American community? Some time ago, Mr. David Evans of Australia drew our attention to this topic with the following email. We're going to skip down a little bit. I've been trying to track down the reason for what I consider to be a preponderance of Welsh surnames among black Americans. I find it curious that again and again, among various subjects of interest to me, jazz and tennis, the names Williams, Evans, Jones, Thomas come up again and again. All right, Mr. J Mr. Evans thus raised several interesting issues. If we accept the widely held notion that slaves tended to adopt the surnames of their masters, a high modern incidence of Welsh surnames would indicate that Welsh immigrants formed a large proportion of the slaveholder class. For reasons discussed below, I believe this concept to be quite wrong. In fact, it seems to me that the Welsh can be quite proud that their names survived to such an extent within the black population of America. My access to the literature has been largely, largely limited to British sources. However, many American visitors to the Data Wells website have contributed their insights, advice, and encouragement. I hope that between us, we have managed to offer a balanced picture. No, I guarantee you that you won't because y'all are, you know, y'all are Caucasians and y'all are trying to Maintain a slave narrative. Let me see here. George F. Nagel of Pennsylvania has carried out valuable research on naming practices in the state. He, he writes, although it is true that slaves in the South did sometimes adopt the surname of the slaveholders or were assigned the name for tax or legal purposes, they almost never did so in the North. Prior to the 1780s, Northern slaves were almost always identified only by a given name. Beginning in the 1780s, as Pennsylvania began its long process of gradual emancipation, some slaves began to be identified with surnames as well as given names. I've collected data on more than 3,000 slaves in Pennsylvania and have found only one instance where the surname of the slave matches the surname of the slave holder. So please <laughs> look at that. He checked over 3,000 so-called slaves and only one of them had the same last name as the slaveholder. You see that? Mm, mm, mm. Y'all gonna learn today. <laughs> let's see, let's read down. It says, I wonder if many people are aware that the name Floyd has a Welsh origin. This was, a, this was originally a descriptive element in early Welsh names in the form Lloyd meaning gray or sometimes or sometimes brown. Hmm. Let me read that again. This was originally a descriptive element in early Welsh names in the form Lloyd meaning gray or sometimes brown. Medieval scribes not of Welsh origin had trouble spelling this and it was often written as Lloyd or in an attempt to reproduce the singular L sound of Welsh as Floyd. Hmm. This is a good article right here. This is a good article right here. Let me see here. Yeah, Ellis is another so called very popular uh, name that. A lot of so-called blacks have that is a Welsh name. 
this person right here is trying to push the slavery narrative. My ancestors were Welsh and came to North America in the late 18th or very early 19th century and had migrated to Alabama by 1820. They were indeed slave owners, and in fact, many of the former slaves stayed long after emancipation. One of the former slaves that stayed with the family had the name of Ellis and was so loved and respected by the family that his name was given to my mother as her middle name, David J. Oh, so in other words, he's saying that his name was Ellis and uh, that his last name was Ellis, but his family's last name wasn't Ellis. So he had his own last name as well. Yeah. All right. So y you know what? Y'all can, um, oh, it's going to list some Welsh surnames. Welsh surnames dominate any list of community names. Owens, Evans, Bowen, Jones, Thomas, Powell. Williams, the list is endless. Mm. You know, you brothers can read this article for yourself. Uh, the city of Montgomery has a population of over 200,000. There is a town called Pritchard and villages called Cardiff, Jones, Rareboth, and Morris. Georgia has the counties of Evans, Montgomery, Jones, Floyd, Morgan, Thomas, Glenn, and Jenkins. As we know, those are all so-called black last names. You look at this. Yeah, this is this is a great article right here. But anyway, uh, y'all got the point. Peace.